Today I will guide you through the process of making a streak plate. We will teach you the proper technique so that you always get isolated colonies. If you don't learn it correctly, we will be very upset. A common task while investigating microorganisms is the generation of pure cultures. This is achieved most often by the use of streak plates. Hey, streak plates are shallow circular containers made of plastic or glass. They are sterilized by UV light, ethylene oxide, or heat. I like heat. Each container has a lid slightly larger than the base that covers the base and prevents nasty microbes and germs in the air from landing onto the medium within. <laughs> medium used for streak plates is typically a liquid broth medium that contains all the nutrients required for growth to which a solidifying agent such as agar has been added. The medium solidifies as a solid disc in the bottom of the plate providing a wide surface for microbes to grow on. Pictured in this portion of the video is sterilized medium containing agar that has been allowed to cool in a 50 degrees celsius water bath. The molten agar is poured into a sterile plate and then allowed to solidify. Microbes are spread in the plate by the use of a sterile inoculating loop. The loop is sterilized by passing it through a flame. Ooh, I like that flame. Novice microbiologists often find dividing the plate into three sectors as shown here makes learning the process easier. The lines on the plate give clear borders to separate streak phases. Once the loop is flame sterilized, it is dipped into the inoculum source, a microbial culture. This provides a large number of microorganisms for use on the streak plate. Note that the loop is allowed to fully cool before being dipped into the microbial culture. The first streak phase is done in the largest sector of the plate. A little less than one half of the plate works well. The loaded loop is now gently run across the surface of the agar plate. During this process, large numbers of microbes fall off the loop and land on the agar surface. Make sure you're gentle. Once the first phase is finished, the loop is sterilized to remove microorganisms. A second and third phase are often needed as the concentration of microorganisms in most bacterial cultures is quite high. For this second phase, the cooled loop is run briefly through the first phase to pick up some microbes and then spread across the surface in the second phase. As this is going on, microbes are falling off the loop. The third phase is done in a manner identical to the second except the source of microbes is the second phase. At this point, microbes will be falling off the inoculating loop one at a time. Each colony that arises in the third phase will likely be formed from a single microorganism as it fell off the loop. After streaking, the plate is incubated at a temperature suitable for growth of the microbe. During incubation, the microbes multiply, but they cannot move. Therefore, they form a pile of cells called a colony. Eventually, these become visible to the naked eye. Pictured here is a plate that has been incubated for appropriate time, in this case 48 hours at 30 degrees centigrade. Here the instructor demonstrates transfer of bacteria 
from a solid growth medium. In this case, the inoculum is much larger and more phases need to be used. Notice that the bacteria is plated in a small area first and then three phases are done. We only show the first phase here. There are a number of common errors people make when making streak plates. Here we demonstrate these errors. Don't do them. It makes me very angry. The first error we see very often when streaking plates is to remove the lid and set it aside while streaking the plate. This allows microbes to land on the agar surface from the air and cause contamination. A plate exposed to air for just a few minutes is shown. Notice the number of colonies and the different colonies that are pointed out that are actually contaminants. Care must be taken not to gouge the agar during streaking. Resting the heel of your hand against the lab bench can often make it easier to control the loop during streaking. Here we show what happens when you don't rest your heel. Nasty gouges. Impatient students will often not let a loop cool enough before using it. The auger will sizzle and melt when it comes in contact with the hot loop. While this is quite enjoyable, it makes for bad streak plates. Another common mistake occurs when students do not run through the previous phase or they dip into it too little. This does not carry enough microbes over to the next phase, resulting in few isolated colonies. The opposite problem can also occur when the student crosses over into the previous phase too much, resulting in confluent growth. Confluent growth means growth across the entire agar surface with no isolated colonies. Streak plating is easy. Any idiot can do it. I certainly learned how. Once you have the basic technique down, it's very simple to get isolated colonies.